nature of hypothesis testing what is hypothesis testing well hypothesis testing is testing whether our claim is valid or not um, some common claims are like smoking increases risk of lung cancer if you drop a ball it will fall to the ground if I eat more vegetables then I will lose weight faster so for this kind of claim uh, we'll see by using hypothesis testing whether these claims are valid or not but we 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 uh, we, um, we we do hypothesis testing a little bit differently because in a statistic uh, you cannot even prove anything right but you can sure enough to prove wrong so what we'll do is uh, we uh, our assumption is opposite of our desired goal and we prove it wrong uh, for, for for example uh, in court you cannot prove anyone innocent but you can only say a person is guilty or not guilty so this is the way we, we, we use hypothesis testing uh, in hypothesis testing uh, we'll use two different hypotheses one is null hypothesis and the another one is alternative hypothesis in null hypothesis a hypothesis is to be tested we use the symbol as not to represent the null hypothesis uh, and for alternative hypothesis uh, it is a hypothesis to be considered as an alternative to the null hypothesis uh, we use the symbol as a to represent the alternative hypothesis now remember the problem in hypothesis test is to decide whether the null hypothesis should be rejected in favor of alternative hypothesis uh, I'll show you some examples later to clarify that concept so um, don't worry about those things for now now null hypothesis in, in this course uh, the null hypothesis for the hypothesis test concerning a population mean we always uh, uh, deal with the you know population mean and um, always specify a single value for that parameter so we express our null hypothesis by this way as not that's the null hypothesis such that mu population mu is not equals to some mu naught mu naught is some some numbers uh, but for alternative hypothesis we'll have a three different situation the first one is if our primary concern is deciding whether a population mean is different from a specified value mu naught uh, if we are dealing with the different then we use the not equals to sign so as a such that mu population mean not equals to mu naught so that's the way of writing alternative hypothesis um, uh, for this kind of hypothesis uh, we call it two-tail test uh, the other one is if our focus is deciding whether a population mean is less than a specified value mu naught so we express uh, this kind of alternative hypothesis by using less than symbol so as a such that mu less than mu naught is our alternative hypothesis uh, since we use that less than sign so we call that left tail test and finally uh, if our main focus is deciding whether a population mean is greater than a specified value mu naught uh, we write our alternative hypothesis by using that greater than sign uh, and this kind of hypothesis this kind of alternative hypothesis is called right tail test um, small note hypothesis test is called one tail test if it's either left tail or right tail uh, if you have not equals to sign that means that's a two tail test so one tail means either right tail or left tail two tails means uh, the alternative hypothesis with not equals to sign a few examples uh, you have one problem here you need to determine whether you are dealing with one tail two tail or both tail okay so uh, let me read the question the mean length of imprisonment for motor vehicles thief offender in Australia is 16.7 month so that's the given information so we can consider that is our mu naught now you want to perform a hypothesis test to decide whether 
the mean length of imprisonment for motor vehicle theft offender in Sydney differs from the national mean in Australia. Now, your question is determine the null hypothesis, alternative hypothesis, and classify the types of hypothesis. Okay, so for this problem, we know the mean length of imprisonment in Australia that's 16.7 month. Now we need to see whether that mean length of imprisonment is differ from the national mean in Australia. Now since we are dealing with the difference, so of course this is two-tailed test. And for null hypothesis, again remember that null hypothesis is always uh, the statement with equality sign. So you can write your null hypothesis by writing as not such that mu equals to 16.7 month where mu is the mean length of imprisonment. Now for alternative since we are talking about the different so yats a such that mu not equals to 16.7 month is our alternative hypothesis and since we have not equals to sign here it's a two-tail test. Another example uh, the Czech and Slov Slovak governments have set a safety limit for cadmium in dry vegetables at 0 0.5 parts per million. So that's the given information. So safety limit is 0 0.5 ppm. Now hypothesis test is to be performed to decide whether the mean level is greater than the government's recommended limit. Now what is the key point here? Is greater than. So find the null hypothesis, alternative hypothesis, and classify the hypothesis. Now again, uh, for null hypothesis, it's a hypothesis with equality sign, and we know the Czech and Slope governments have set the safety limit at 0 0.5 ppm. So if you denote mu as mean cadmium level, so your null hypothesis as not is just mu equals 0 0.5 ppm. And since we are talking about the greater than, so your alternative hypothesis is as a such that mu greater than 0 0.5 ppm. So greater than sign means this is right tail test. Okay, so another example. Uh, again, uh, you don't need to read all the details carefully. The most important things you need is the given uh, sample mean. So for example, here the recommended daily allowance of iron for adult female under the age of 51 is 18 milligrams. So the recommended um, daily allowance of iron that's 18 mz per day. So that's the given information. So clearly without reading all the other uh, sentence you can say your null hypothesis is as not equals mu equals as not such that mu equals 18 milligram per day. Now a hypothesis test is to perform to decide whether adult females under the age of 51 years are on average getting less than, that's the keyword, getting less than the RDA of 18 mg of iron. Uh, this is similar with the previous example. The only difference is this word less than. So, okay, so you need to find null hypothesis, alternative hypothesis and classify the hypothesis type. Since this is less than, so clearly it's a left tail test, null hypothesis, as I mentioned, if you denote mu as a mean daily intake of iron by adult females under the age of 51, then alternative, sorry, null hypothesis is as not such that mu equals to 18 mg per day. Uh, since we are talking about less than, so alternative is as a such that mu less than 18 mg per day, so it's left tail test. Uh, now uh, in hypothesis testing uh, we may encounter error sometimes so we classify uh, error into two types type 1 and type 2 error. Type 1 error is rejecting the null hypothesis when it is in fact true and type 2 error is not rejecting the null hypothesis when it is in fact false. So we can classify that in this uh, simple table. Now remember that uh, this is true as not and this is false as not. Now if as not is true 
we cannot reject null hypothesis. So that's the correct decision. But if as not is true and you still reject null hypothesis, so that's the definition of type 1 error. Okay. And similarly, when as not is false, you reject as not, right? If it's false, reject as not. That's the correct decision. But if you do not reject as not, even if it's false, that's an error. We call that kind of error as type 2 error. Okay, let's uh, uh, see one example to understand that concept. Uh, this is the same example as we did earlier. Uh, the mean length of imprisonment for a motor vehicle thief offender in Australia is 16.7 months. Now, uh, you want to perform a hypothesis test to decide whether the mean length of imprisonment of uh, for motor vehicle thief offenders in Sydney differs from the national mean in Australia. Explain what each of the following would mean. What do you mean by type 1 or either occur, type 2 either occur, or what is the correct decision here? Okay, now remember that. Uh, first, uh, let's recall the definition of type 1 error. Type 1 error is rejecting the null hypothesis when it is in fact true. So, type 1 error occur if in fact mu equals to 16.7. Now remember, this is your null hypothesis. Okay, because uh, for null hypothesis we use equality sign. Now, if your null hypothesis is true, but the result of the sampling leads to the conclusion that null hypothesis is not true. So that's uh, the definition of type 1 error, so uh, type 1 or error occur in this situation. Now similarly, type 2 error is not rejecting the null hypothesis when it is in fact false. Now mu not equals to 16.7 is alternative hypothesis, so null hypothesis is false, but the result of the sampling failed to lead to that conclusion. If this situation happened, we call it a type 2 error. Uh, which means, uh, other than these two cases, we will make a correct decision. So, if mu equals to 16.7 month and the result of the sampling do not lead to the rejection of that, then that's a correct decision. Or, if uh, in fact mu not equals to 16.7 month and the result of the sampling lead to the uh, lead to that conclusion. So that's the correct decision. So always remember the definition. So type 1 error occur when rejecting the null hypothesis when it is uh, in fact true. That's the type 1 error. And not rejecting the null hypothesis when it is in fact false. That's the type 2 error. Uh, another word that you need to be familiar with is significance level. Uh, significance level is the probability of making a type 1 error. That is, uh, probability of rejecting a true null hypothesis is called significance level. Uh, we denote this by this uh, symbol alpha. Uh, uh, also, uh, we denote the type 2 error by this symbol beta. Now, remember, for a fixed sample size, the smaller we specify the significance level alpha, the larger the larger will be the probability B of not rejecting a false null hypothesis. Uh, possible conclusion for a hypothesis testing. Uh, suppose that the hypothesis test is conducted at a small significance level. Now, if the null hypothesis is rejected, then we conclude that the data provides sufficient evidence to support the alternative hypothesis. Now, null and alternative are just uh, complementary to each other. So if we reject null hypothesis, then we have sufficient evidence to say that uh, the alternative hypothesis is true. Similarly, if the null hypothesis is not rejected, we conclude that the data do not provide sufficient evidence to support the alternative hypothesis. Now remember, if you fail to reject null hypothesis, then we cannot say that let's accept uh, uh, let's accept null hypothesis. That's not how this works. Okay, 
So if you fail to reject null hypothesis, we simply say uh, the sample data does not provide sufficient evidence to support the alternative.